Welcome everyone to the Lben Tea House, and let me, your host Lben, greet you all. Recently, a lot of young people rushed to big cities like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Xinjiang right after graduating from college. No matter how they fare there, they just refuse to return to their hometowns. You all must be curious about why that is, right? A few days ago, we had some friends over at the tea house talking about this very topic. One by one, they started sharing their thoughts. Let's hear what they had to complain about. Some say that they and their parents are better off not seeing each other, as they miss each other ordinarily. But within less than three days of staying together, they'd turn the house into a complete mess, with chaos everywhere. Another friend mentioned that their hometown is so poor that there's nothing to do but herd sheep. And while doing so, they still have to endure the bullying of the village chief. Who would want to go back to that? Yet another guy had something else to say, right? He can't go back because the customs in his area are severe. Yeah, we've seen some pranking of the groom during weddings or making inappropriate jokes with the bridesmaids. Later, some may become unused to these practices when they go back home. After listening to all this, my buddy was unimpressed and said, "What are these compared to the customs we have back home?" Curious, I asked him, "What else is there?" Then he told me, "Do you know what a ghost marriage is?" That is, a spirit marriage. There are two types of ghost marriages. The first type is when someone's child passes away young. Folks back home feel the child has lost out having never been married, so they'll find another deceased person of similar age and bury the two skeletons together so they can be a couple in the afterlife. The second type is a marriage between a living person and a deceased person. This is usually when the couple was engaged to be married, but unfortunately, one of them passed away prematurely. The family will hold a ceremony to give an explanation to the deceased and also comfort the spirit in heaven. Good evening, everyone. Today, let's talk about the ghost husband story from the TV series Plum Blossom Cave. In it, Lemay marries Kay Kwikshuan, and in their family, they mix marriage and death rituals, holding both red and white events together. As a storyteller, I'm no stranger to such things, but I'm a bit puzzled. What does this custom have to do with not wanting to go back to your hometown? Suddenly, that guy threw out a line that gave us all a big shock. He said he had personally witnessed the ghost marriage ceremony in his hometown. Are you all itching to hear more? Tonight, I'm going to tell you a real ghost marriage story. This guy's name is De Peng, and he's from Xinjiang. Xinjiang, where is that? That's the hometown of the iron-blooded general Xu Shai Ayu, and it's where he was born and laid to rest. Old Xu, when he was young, he joined the revolution, fought across the country alongside Chairman Mao. And earned great merit, but his biggest regret was not being able to fulfill his filial duties to his mother. As the saying goes, "The trees wish to stay still, but the wind will not cease. Sons wish to support their parents, but they may not be there." So when the central government advocated cremation, Liu Xiaoqi, Peng Dewei, Deng Xiaoping, and Zhou Enlai all signed, only Xu Shaiyi did. When asked why, he said that he had spent his life fighting for the revolution and that in death he had to be buried with his mother. Having not fulfilled his filial duty in life, he had to attend to her in death. When Chairman Mao heard about this, everyone thought he would react strictly. But after hearing it, the chairman simply smiled, and the matter was dropped. Decades later, in 1985, feeling his days were numbered and suffering from late-stage liver cancer, the aged Xu Shaiyu wrote a letter to the central government, once again requesting a burial in the ground. His letter said, "I've been dedicated to the revolution since I was young." The loneliness of ten years on the battlefield is somewhat eased by retiring to the deep mountains. If this is not settled, I have no other demand from the organization. I have one last wish: to be filial in death and to rest beside my mother. Comrade Xiao Ping received this letter, and it reminded him of the scene from many years ago. Back then, everyone had signed in support of the cremation policy, except for Xu Shaiyu, who insisted on a burial. Those past events seemed to unfold right before his eyes. So. What was Comrade Xiao Ping's final instruction? He wrote, "Comrade Xu Shaiyu is a special person with a unique character, extraordinary vigor, and exceptional contributions. His request for a burial is approved, but this will not set a precedent. Consequently, Xu Shaiyu became the only senior CCP leader who was not cremated after Mao Zedong. Was Xu Shaiyu's burial really about filial piety? It's half and half." His mother passed away in 1965, while he had already been titled as a general in 1955. So the old lady actually enjoyed the glory of her son in her later years. 
the other half of the reason is that people from Henan, Hebei, Shandong, and Shanxi still hold to traditional views, believing that it's more peaceful for the dead to be buried in the ground rather than cremated. Xu Shai Ayu also held such beliefs in his heart. Even now, there are still a large number of people in the Central Plains who are buried in secret after death. Back then, De Peng was 17 years old. With poor academic performance and underage, he dropped out of school and spent his days hanging out in internet cafes. His family wasn't well off, otherwise, they wouldn't have let their child drop out, so he was like a little vagrant. Saving up some money to go online, and finding a place to sleep when he had none. Once, a new face appeared in the internet cafe. Internet cafes in small places usually have regular customers. So it's rare to see strangers come to surf the net, which is why Depeng noticed when someone new came in. The man looked to be in his 40s, he sat down without any hesitation, even took the initiative to talk to the kids next to him, and even treated them to drinks and snacks with his own money. If you didn't have enough money for the internet, he would unhesitatingly pay 5 or 10 yuan to top up for you, and 10 yuan could last you a whole day in a shady internet cafe. Soon, this person became familiar with the kids in the internet cafe, and everyone called him Old Su or Brother Su. Old Su was especially warm to De Peng, he practically took care of everything, and whenever De Peng came, he would definitely sit next to Brother Su. As time went by, De Peng got curious. He asked Old Su, Brother Su, what do you do? Why don't you work during the day and only play games? Old Su replied, I indeed don't work during the day, but brother, I work at night. De Peng asked, what do you do at night? Old Su answered with a laugh, ha ha, don't be scared when I tell you. I deal with the supernatural. De Peng was confused, supernatural? What do you mean? Old Su explained, it means that I can help whenever a family needs a ghost marriage arranged. Usually, there's nothing to do, I just need to take care of this kind of business at night, and during the day, I can do whatever I want. I recently got hooked on online games, that's why I come here to play. I'm a good guy, have money, love the excitement, and I like having you guys join me in playing. After hearing about it, De Peng was envious, thinking that the job was too good to be true, just do something simple at night, which doesn't affect daytime rest, and he can play games too. He saw old Su dressed fashionably, spending money liberally, like a big boss. He thought to himself how great it would be if he could work in this line. So, with a burst of excitement, he could hardly wait. A few days later, he found an opportunity and said to old Su, does your line of work take apprentices? I want to work with you. Old Su answered, we don't fuss about apprenticeship in our profession, if you come, you're in. When I'm too busy, I'll pass the task to you. No other requirements, just give me a two-inch photo of yourself. De Peng was surprised, that's it? No need to learn spells or sorcery? Old Su said, who even knows all that stuff? Just be obedient, and do whatever they ask you to do. Alright, call me when you get a chance, I want to earn money too, De Peng replied. The next day, he handed old Su his photo, jokingly saying, you're not a scam agent, are you? Because I don't have any money. Old Su replied, no, I didn't ask you for money. Don't worry, I'll call you when there's work to be done. Unexpectedly, two days later, old Su really came looking for him, saying that there was a family that needed a burial, asking him to act as the spirit groom. De Peng asked, aren't you going tonight, brother Su? Old Su replied, no, no, no. I was supposed to go, but they saw I was older and wanted someone younger. There's 2000 yuan for this job. Take it. De Peng was ecstatic, I haven't done anything yet and already have 2000 yuan, I have to thank you. Brother Su said, no problem, buy a new set of clothes, clean yourself up, and meet here at 10.30 tonight, we'll continue playing games after the work is done. So, De Peng went, got himself cleaned up smartly, and prepared for the evening's work. As time slowly ticked to 10.30 p.m., De Peng and Old Su both got in the car and drove towards the cemetery. De Peng asked along the way, what will I need to do later? Old Su answered, you just need to stand there, stand wherever they ask you to. Basically, you won't have to do much, maybe help lift during the burial. Other than that, nothing much. He added, how about it? 2000 yuan, easy money. Okay, I'll listen to you, De Peng agreed. Before long, the two of them arrived at the cemetery. Looking around, there were red and white everywhere, and the top of the grave was hung with a red dragon skirt. The host family welcomed them on arrival, saying, Ah, the groom's here, come quickly, we're all waiting for you. De Peng was puzzled, he had never seen any groom, 
while old Sue dragged him forward. When they got to the scene, they saw one side was the desiccated grave, another side where people were burning paper money, and a large group of people bustling around the coffin. Old Sue reminded him, didn't I say? There's no work, just stand there. Then a man in a long robe came over, hung a big red flower onto Peng's chest, and stood in front of the coffin and started to recite. In a daze both cold and lone, a shadow solitary, with only a wooden tablet for embrace, deep in the land of dreams and spirit calling. Henceforth a shadow without a home. A cup of bitter wine, night's red candles, paired with golden drums, henceforth, in the underworld a matched tiger, fear not the living's blade. My dear husband. Today we have the young Miss Wang, married over with a dowry and bridal gifts of 5,000 yuan complete. Promising the groom a fulfilled fate, the auspicious time has come, let the burial proceed. As the command to bury was given, the people immediately began to turn the coffin, causing Depeng to feel extremely panicked. Just moments before, he had thought he was simply standing behind the coffin as a prop, with people chanting in front and requiring nothing of him. He never expected to become the focal point of the entire ceremony. But when the coffin was turned around, Depeng suddenly saw the wedding photo hanging on top of the coffin. The woman in the photo was probably the Miss Wang who was mentioned earlier, and the man beside her was himself. That's when he realized that he wasn't just some mold, but was actually used as the groom for a ghost marriage. When he turned around, old Su was nowhere to be seen. After the burial ceremony, Depeng found that everyone seemed indifferent toward him, as if they didn't have any relation with this new son-in-law, and they all left. When he got home, unlike the traditional horror stories, Depeng didn't fall seriously ill or encounter misfortune. Instead, he specifically sought out people knowledgeable in this area to inquire. He was informed that this event wasn't really bad, and old Su had no malice. Of the 5,000 yuan given as a betrothal gift, 3,000 went to old Su, and 2,000 to Depeng as a compensation. Also, they explained that in today's rule of law society, being a living person serving as a spirit in a ghost marriage is not a big deal. If it had been in the past, it might not have been just this ceremony, he might have been buried alive. So actually, Depeng was quite lucky. However, the event did have an impact on Depeng. Ever since then, no matter how deep his relationship with his girlfriends, whenever marriage was discussed, the relationship would always end in a breakup. The reason collectively deduced by his four ex-girlfriends was, marrying Depeng always felt like a second marriage. Friends, that's the story for tonight. I hope you all enjoyed it.